Okay, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of Complete Sports Media's podcast. I'm your host Darren Campbell and uh, we're coming to you on a Monday. We're doing a great wrap-up of the weekend of sports. Uh, amazing weekend behind us, especially the UFC. Man, like a couple weekends in a row, just amazing, amazing cards, great fights, lots of finishes. Uh, can't wait to break it down with Jason Cameron, our guest that we usually bring in on Mondays. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy to see him today. I couldn't wait to talk about the UFC and other things with him tonight. How are you, bud? I'm doing well. I'm doing good. I had a very good uh, weekend and especially most definitely enjoyed watching this UFC card on Saturday during the day. It was fantastic. It was yeah. really, really good. Yeah, yeah. I can't wait to... Break it down with you. It's going to be fun. It was really fantastic. Uh, two weeks in a row, we've had amazing cards and a lot this year. Uh, you know, it, I'm always amazed that, um, you know, you look at a card and you start thinking, um, it, eh, this one might not be as good. You know, USC 275 was, you know, labeled as the, the card this month, as the one you really wanted to look at because it had title fights and it had amazing rematches. But uh, even though um, the co-main event fell off, uh, this one was still still really, really good. But uh, I, I do want to cover our weekend. I want to talk a little bit about our weekend. Uh, did you know that today is the last day of spring and tomorrow is the first day of summer? Sure doesn't uh, feel like it around here, but um, keep fingers crossed that we finally get to see a summer. Yeah, yeah, that'd be nice. Like, you know, like it's, it's like May was, again, cold. Like it was it was cold. Like it was for me, it just told me like maybe summer is not coming. Maybe, maybe somebody canceled it. Oh man, that kind of sucks. I really was looking forward to that. But I I I'm I'm excited to see it, the sun and feel the warmth of my skin. Like I'm I'm excited. I I, I really I really want to do this. I really want to be outside and enjoying life outside. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, with your rehab and your injuries still there, uh, yeah, it must be lousy that you can't be out um, enjoying the sunshine like you should be this time of year uh, i don't know global warming uh, might be false because uh, it sure is not happening around here uh <laughs> they've been talking about it for a long time but uh, i think global warming forgot the province of bc here i think everywhere else is getting a summer but we sure don't have one yet but uh let's hope very very soon uh, we're gonna get to see the sun for an extended period of time um there's a lot of things to also cover uh father's day yesterday uh got a chance to talk to my dad and and he predicted the the winner of the u.s open uh u.s open golf tournament always finishes on father's day and uh, him and i uh we will golf together on it uh, we always talk about golf we always watch it uh he was able to predict the winner uh really awesome prediction by him and uh it was fun to chat with him a little bit uh get a chance to talk with your dad on father's day uh, unfortunately no I, I did not get a chance to talk to him but uh i do have a question in regards to you and your father sure did you guys have a bet did you have a bet did your father take your money basically that's what i'm asking did no no we should have uh we should have put a lot of money down on his prediction there we we would have done really really well but no we didn't we didn't bet i i predicted a couple uh different guys that didn't pull it off but he was uh, he was spot on. He's a he's a golf aficionado and he knows what he's what he's talking about. And uh, I should have definitely threw some money down as soon as I hear him made it made him make his prediction. Yeah, because it sounds like it was an amazing prediction and obviously it was spot on. So yeah. next time, next yeah, time, yeah. take your dad's advice. Next, next time. time I will. Yeah, there's a few more majors to come this year, so uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll have to get it in. I'll, I'll make sure I get plenty of advice from him and throw some money down. And so, uh, yeah, I don't have to go back to work soon. Uh, I'd like to, <laughs> I'd like to put that in the past and just do this every day all the time. Uh, be a lot more fun than uh, going to work 12 hours a day. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. The 12 hour grind is a grind. It's yeah. a grind for anybody. Right. So that, and believe me, yes, I'm getting my work in, getting my body right. So I could go back to that grind. But for now, I'm kind of enjoying some time off. Yeah. Uh, we had a, um, a really great thing happening in Montreal. Uh, the F1 Canadian Grand Prix was on. Uh, 
obviously uh, your cousin uh, Dave is uh, really huge into F1 and uh, really great to see um, yeah his his stuff from the qualifying and during the race and uh, yeah awesome uh, it was two years um, canceled or postponed and uh, finally got to see F1 racing back in Montreal uh, fun to watch and uh, what a what an amazing event I I went out there a few years ago and it's uh, it's just amazing you and I should make a trip uh, next year yeah yeah it is it is an amazing event I think I want to say years ago, years ago, it was actually here in Vancouver. I'm, I'm pretty sure there, there might have been no, an F1. No, not, no, not F1. Never been here, unfortunately, no. Okay. I, okay. I, okay. So it was a different race race yeah. event. It wasn't yeah. F1. In, IndyCar yeah. racing, but um, never uh, F1. Never F1. Okay. So it was an IndyCar race. It's not F1, but... I, it is a, it's a lot of fun. That's the only thing I can, I can equate it to because I, I've, I've been at this event. It's a lot of fun and it's uh it, it brings a, a large amount of economy into, you know, the community and stuff. So and that's incredible. always a good thing. It's incredible. Yeah. Really good. Uh, we're recording this um, Monday night during game three of the Stanley cup final on Saturday night. Uh, the Colorado Avalanche uh, won game two. They were already up uh, one game to none. They won game two, seven nothing. Absolutely blew away the uh, defending champions, Tampa Bay Lightning. But tonight, uh, Tampa Bay has reversed it, and it's uh, six two right now after two periods for Tampa Bay. So uh, they've made a series out of it, and uh, a lot of people thought, "Oh, that was it. Colorado is just gonna." sweep these guys out of here and get the Stanley Cup. But, uh, yeah, Tampa Bay's fighting back, back at home and uh, looking good. Well, you know what? Uh, you can't count out the defending champs. Yeah. I'm sorry. The back-to-back -back defending champs. Good time, so, yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, they had a bad game. Yeah. They chalked it up to that. It's a bad game. We'll be back. But we're definitely not going to be embarrassed again. Yeah. And look at that. They're not. <laughs> yeah, they're they're playing awesome. Uh, it's fun to watch tonight's game, and uh, yeah, they you're right. Uh, those defending back to back champions, uh, never say die attitude, and and uh, yeah, awesome, awesome to watch. Um, yeah, they've been fantastic this whole entire playoffs, and uh, you know, I nobody should have doubted them that uh, they could bounce back like this. So um, yeah, thankfully it'll be a series uh, at least. Um, yeah, moving. Moving on to another game. Uh, I wanted to mention that um, I had, I had a, uh, I was able to see a movie last night that was one of the best movies I've ever seen. I'm a big sports lover. Obviously, we do the sports podcast, uh, so I like sports movies. But this movie last night that I watched, one of the best sports movies of all time, uh, one of the best basketball sports movies of all time. Um, have you heard about this? New movie that's just come out that's uh, getting rave reviews and and a lot of press and I'm so happy I watched it. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna take a shot in the dark here. Are you talking about uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo's movie Rise? No, no, oh. that one's. I think that one's out a little bit later this week. I don't think it has actually hit the hit the airwaves yet. Oh, okay, all right. I don't know. Okay. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you might not be able to get it if you haven't heard any rumors and stuff. Um, one of a guy that um, usually doesn't get a lot of praise for his movies. He he pumps them out. He puts out maybe a one movie a year, one every two years. He's been I don't know how many movies he's done. Probably a good fifty or something like that. But um, Adam Sandler has a basketball movie oh. that is awesome. It's yeah. awesome. Have you heard of it? Hustle, right? Hustle, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I I just heard about it just literally the other day, where Adam Sandler is playing an NBA scout or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah. And apparently, Kenny the Jet Smith is in the movie. He's he's very prominent in it. Uh, he's he's really really prominent. He he plays one of the main characters. Okay, there you go. So I have heard about the movie. I've heard it's very good. And from what I saw from a podcast where Kenny Jet Smith was talking about the movie, he said that it's actually pretty close to real life. Like yeah. whatever they were showing in the movie about what an NBA scout actually does, you know, it, it's it's pretty much spot on. 
Yeah, no, man, it was great. I, uh, I've, I got to know a lot of scouts over the years, and, and I knew what uh, what it, it took to be an NBA scout. You had to really scour the earth. Uh, you had to go to so many places all over, and and uh, you know try to hopefully find a diamond in the rough. Uh, you know some gem out there that nobody else has noticed, and then you sort of have to hide them. You know, and <laughs> and try to you know make sure nobody signs them uh, before you you've got them. Uh, you know, penciled in or, you know, signed a contract with. And then uh, then you try to get them into a gra- draft combine against some of the other guys. And it was it was awesome. I was really super impressed. I couldn't believe all the stars in it, though, like all the basketball stars. Like you say, you got Kenny the Jet Smith, the rest of his TNT crew uh, inside the NBA oh. guys, um, Chuck, uh, Shaq, uh, EJ were all all in it. Uh, li- listen to the guys. I'm just going to like blast them off. Listen to all the people that were in this movie. Kyle Lowry, uh, Tyrese Maxey, Matisse Thybulle, Dr. J, Tobias Harris, Seth Curry, Doc Rivers, Trey Young, Boban Marjanovic, Luka Doncic, Allen Iverson, Aaron Gordon, Dirk Nowitzki, uh, the Hernan Gomez brothers, Jordan Clarkson, Mark Jackson, Dan Patrick, Chris Middleton, Mark Jackson. It's like, it was just fuck, just on and on and on. Like every scene, you'd see somebody. Holy cow! Oh, look at whoa! That's Mark. Oh, that's him. That's a. It was it was cool. Like I couldn't believe that Adam Sandler would be able to get cameos from that many guys and and prominent roles from a lot of uh, NBA guys. It was it was awesome. That is actually pretty impressive yeah. that they were able to get all those guys in, especially with everybody's busy work schedules and stuff. That they were still able to get all those guys in, and oh, by the way, those guys you need to be paid. So <laughs> to pay them too, as well for their time, and yeah. compensate them fairly, that's impressive. Yeah, no, I I was blown away. I couldn't believe that there was that many guys that he could get in, and um, yeah, it was fun. I really recommend watching it, Jason, and and any of our viewers and listeners, uh, even if you're not a basketball fan. Hell of a movie. It was great. Really enjoyed it a ton and um, loved it. Um, Friday night, uh, we were really excited. We had tickets to the Commodore, a uh, big concert that we were looking forward to for a couple months we had tickets for. And then uh, hours before, uh, they postponed it. Uh, we were shocked and uh, really stunned and surprised. Never really got a reason why. Uh, I guess they've rescheduled to sometime in August. So we just turned around and we just found a uh, comedy night that we could go to, and we had a blast. We went to uh, New Westminster on the main drag. There's a place, uh, a theater there, and they have um, comedy night, and uh, it was fun. We really had a lot of laughs, good time. Uh, really wanted to go to the concert. It was a band that's, um, it was a big band in the 90s, a local Vancouver band called Moist, and uh, another um, opening act from them. Um, but, um, yeah, for some reason, boom, we just, uh, got word. Luckily we weren't already down there, uh, when it happened, but we got word that it got postponed. So, uh, we just had to make a shift and, uh, go to comedy. Yeah. So sometimes you, you just have to adjust to the situation. It's unfortunate that that stuff happened, but I've been to that comedy club in new West. It is awesome. It is, uh, it is uh, a barrel of laughs, so to yeah. speak. It, yeah. It's a lot of fun. I've had a lot of fun out there. You said you got out on Friday night, too. You got out doing something fun? Yes, I did. Um, I, w- I was fortunate enough that a friend came by to pick me up. And we went out to his place out in North Van, where we had uh, dinner and some drinks and, and a ton of laughs. It was, it was, it was a lot of fun because uh, uh, my friend's wife, uh, Katrina, excellent cook. Oh, stellar, awesome. Unbelievable. Nice. Uh, I, 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 I enjoy all of her food that she cooks. It's just a shame that I can't take it when I leave because they have kids, apparently. They got kids. Apparently, they get hungry. So that Tupperware I bought you just didn't, doesn't come in handy when you go there? <sighs> Unfortunately not. But, you know, I, I'm going to talk her into it. I'm like, you know, the kids are old enough. They can cook for themselves. It's fine. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> That's a good suggestion. Yeah, I, I can't wait to hear her reaction uh, when you drop that one on her. It's probably not going to be good. I'm not going to lie. It's probably not going to be good. <laughs> well, I'm glad you got fed well. Uh, home-cooked meals are always amazing. I had a, a really great uh, meal yesterday for Father's Day, and 
it was uh, it was an awesome weekend. Um, but uh, let's let's talk about this great 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 card that happened on Saturday night. Uh, we were kind of you know coming off that big glow of UFC 275, uh, a fight night, Austin, Texas, uh, first night uh, our first event ever in this Moody Arena in Austin, Texas. Um, the card looked okay, but it didn't look like a world beater. You just weren't thinking, okay, well, this is going to be top to bottom great. Uh, especially when uh, Joe Lozon, Cowboy Cerrone, uh, late uh, cancellation, the co-main event was off. And um, yeah, so um, lowered expectations were happening going in. But man, did this card ever deliver. Uh, it, set, it tied a record for the most finishes, most KOs. Um, in any UFC card, and uh, man, like just right off the top, KO, 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 so many KOs, and and uh, really, really, really great fights the whole entire night. It was fantastic. Like sometimes you can just be shocked with these hidden gems of cards, where you're just like you look at the card and you go, hey, you know, it looks pretty solid. Like, yeah, all right, all right. And then once it happens, you're like, oh man, oh man, this is. It's good. <laughs> it's really good. Yeah. And this card was one of those. It was just a stellar card from top to bottom. Yeah, it sure was. Uh, it was amazing. There was, uh, yeah, just so much atmosphere. Uh, my favorite card this entire year was the card in England, uh, where they just had such an incredible crowd. Uh, but the crowd was really into it this at, at this one. And uh, as I said, uh, it's, you know, started off prelims right with some KOs and some really, really, really big finishes. Uh, some of the things that, um, you know, I really wanted to focus in on were uh, definitely, the you know, the big, big KO. Uh, Kevin Holland, uh, you know, he's he's a guy that, you know, I, I, I just love watching him fight. Uh, he just brings so much entertainment factor into it. Uh, he's just so fun to watch. And this was... Another amazing performance for him at this new weight class. Uh, Walter Wade, I think this is the weight class he should have been in for a really long time. And, uh, yeah, he's looking really strong. He has such an, a ridiculous advantage in his reach yeah. at that weight class. Like, his his reach advantage. Because at first when I saw him go in there in his new slimmed down 170 body, I'm like, guys, ah, he's real lean. Like, it's just like, wow. But the thing that was super noticeable, his speed has definitely increased. Wow. He is yeah. a lot faster than what he ever was at 185. Yeah. Like, I, I'm, I was shocked at how much faster he was. And just the way that he whips in those punches like he's throwing a fastball, that's a lot of power behind those whip-like punches, man. Yeah. And Means felt every single one of those, man. Yeah. Like, after a while, Tim Means is tough as hell. All right? Sure Everybody sure knows is. that. But he got cracked, and then he couldn't recover, and which led to eventually Kevin cracking him a number of times, and then getting that Darst choke and sinking it in. And again, with those long limbs, he did it so easy, so quick, so easy. Yeah, I was able to sink that in just fast and and force the tap just just crazy quick. It was amazing. Uh, the main event, uh, it was great. Uh, a bit of controversy. Some uh, quite a few people um, had Cater winning it. Uh, Cater was out striking Emmett, but Emmett was landing the more powerful punches, uh, a lot harder strikes. Um, it, you know, Cater was definitely feeling them a lot more. Uh, Cater was beating the heck out of his eye with a jab that was, you know, almost closing his eye completely. And uh, he, he came on late. I had Emmett winning those first three rounds. And Cater dominating those last two rounds, but um, the judges, you know, two of the judges saw it the same way I did. One of them saw it, Cater winning. What what was your um, impression as you watched this one? Extremely high level match between two ridiculously durable competitors, yeah. and and they're both trying to take each other's heads off. But I love the fact that they were taking their time in the first round because they both knew it was like, I can hurt me. And I can hurt him. Yeah. So we're going to take our time to see where I can pick my shots. Yeah. I was actually very, very impressed with, I think, in the third round where Cater started to switch it up and start throwing some more damaging elbows. 
to try, try to get to hurt Emmett a little bit more. Sure. And it did work. He did wobble him with on his first elbow. Yeah. But at the same time, again, Emmett, that guy's tough, super, super durable, just like Cater. And those guys just kept just launching punches and fists. And, ah, it was amazing fight. But yes, I did have Emmett ahead. And like, he just seemed like he was just, like you said, landing the more powerful punches, punches that physically moved Cater. Yeah. And which is a, is a visual aspect for the judges to say, ah, it seems to me like he's landing the more damaging punches. But it, it was close, man. Like if Cater had maybe made that switch to elbows a little sooner, maybe Cater wins this fight. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. He he definitely landed a lot more telling blows later. Um he he probably should have switched it up sooner. His he was uh, you know, out striking Emmett quite a bit, I thought, but uh, you know, Emmett's punches were just so powerful and and really doing a lot of damage. And uh, yeah, the referees saw it that way. Um there was you know, they were both in trouble at times, but um yeah, it it was it was amazing. Uh, that featherweight division, uh, it, it's it's a you know murderer's row really. Uh, we'll see what the um, rankings are, but Emmett went in number seven, and Cater was number four. Um, obviously, we've got the uh, featherweight title fight coming up between Volkanovski and Holloway, and then we've got uh, at number two we got Ortega, number three we got Yair Rodriguez, five we got the Korean Zombie. Six Arnold Allen, and then down eight, nine, ten. We've got Giga Chikadze, Bryce Mitchell, and Mosar Evluev. Um, man, what a great division! We'll see if if he takes his number four slot, and we'll see uh, if Cater drops down. But uh, both these guys, um, you know, should stay right near the top of this division for sure. Oh yeah, like with that performance that Cater had, that doesn't mean that he should be dropped drops too far like if anything he maybe just drops down to five yeah like, that's about it because that's how good those two were that's how close that match was that's just a barely a loss for cater so he yeah. shouldn't be dropping too far and uh they got th- that was fight of the night they both got 50k they also handed out 10 performance bonuses to everybody that got finish so uh sixty thousand six hundred thousand dollars in bonuses were handed out by Uncle Dana, uh, very generous in a giving mood, and uh, he he just basically said, you know, how do you pick? There was all these finishes, uh, everybody was just finishing. So how do I pick only two, three, four of those? Uh, let's just give them all fifty k, and uh, that was pretty cool to hear. Yeah, that's it's always nice when Uncle Dana says it's raining stacks of fifty thousand. It's just raining. It's raining. Catch it. Catch it. That, that's fun, man. That's fun. And also, too, it drives the 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 UFC athletes to know it's like, if I do something spectacular, I'm going to be rewarded even more so than just getting my win my my win share. Yeah, you know, I'm going to get yeah. more. So I th- I think and, that so I think cool. that's the second weekend in a row that um, they've done that. And um, so yeah, we're probably going to see a lot more finishes uh, after you know these guys notice if I can finish, I'm going to get this. I'm going to get this type of bonus. Uh, 50K means a lot to a lot of these fighters. So, um, yeah, it's, it's great, really great to see. Uh, I heard Dana talk about um, the figures after. Uh, he said it was their 17th consecutive sellout. Uh, their gate was uh, $1.93 million at sellout at 13689 Uh Really neat um, arena they got there. It, it seemed... Uh, really good for boxing or MMA. Uh, it seemed like a bit of a, more of a square instead of uh, a hockey arena, or basketball arena where it's stretched out, elongated. Uh, it looked pretty cool there. I, I, I thought it was neat. Yeah, I know. I thought the configuration was good. I, I thought like the sight lines for all the fans were fantastic in that arena. It, uh, it was different, but it, it looked like it definitely worked for sure. Yeah, it sure did. Um, okay, uh, let's yeah, let's break down the card a little bit more. We've talked about Kevin Holland uh, a bit. Uh, we saw the fight before that. Um, I think we saw the best of Joaquin Buckley in this one. Uh, he ended up uh, beating Dur- Duraev so much that uh, closed his eye 
Uh, doctors decided that um, his eye was too badly damaged, couldn't see out of it, was unable to begin the third round. But uh, Buckley, um, he, he's been able to figure out his cardio finally. He, he still looked really, really fresh and sharp. And uh, I think he's getting really uh, better. And I think he can start uh, joining that upper echelon in that division. Yeah. Yeah. Like his, uh, whatever his endurance or cardio issues were, seems to be figured out because he looked more than ready to continue to motor on in the third round. Like he, he was, he was ready to go. I loved his diversity of his attacks, his in and out movement. And Doraev, I, I want to say, I think had a hard time trying to find him throughout the course of this fight. You know, he was very elusive. And then, but when he committed to his kicks and punches, man, that dude's got a ton of power. And oh, yeah. you could, from, from Dariah's eye, you could tell just how much power that man has. He could not see out of it, and he could not continue. It was a great stoppage, by the way, by the refs yeah. uh, to, for the safety of the fighter. But uh, great, dominant win by Buckley. Yeah, I was glad they. Uh, I was glad they wouldn't let it continue. Uh, he could have been, uh, you know, seriously hurt with uh, only one eye. Oh, uh, one eye open and able to see. Um, that's just not fair. And um, Buckley had that amazing uh, spinning kick that uh, knocked out Impa Kinsagne, and you know that's what's on the highlight reels all the time these days. But I think Buckley's getting better. Um, he's he, he's not quite there yet in that middleweight division, but. Um, I think, uh, look out, uh, I think he's really working hard, and uh, I think he finally has been able to um, quit his part-time job and make uh, MMA his full-time thing, so I think we're going to see him grow leaps and bounds. Yeah, it, his skill level is rising, and yeah. it's rising quickly. You know, like It is very noticeable to me, and then also, too, I just wanted to say that his takedown defense, stellar, yeah. was fantastic, it was really good in this fight. He was able to always battle back to his feet not stay on the map for, for too long at all. Yeah. Uh, before we move forward, I actually want to mention about Kevin Holland. Uh, he stopped another uh, thief uh, the, the night before the fights. Uh, a guy had broken into a store and stolen a whole bunch of perfume. And uh, as he was running away, Holland uh, was alerted to it. Uh, chased him down, stopped him, held him there until the cops showed up. Uh, he's become... Uh, the real life Batman, uh, he just keeps doing it. Uh, Dana White says, uh, we just, you know, all, all the power to him, but just don't get hurt doing this stuff. But, uh, uh, this is about the fourth or fifth incident, uh, of him doing stuff like this in the past year or two. And, uh, man, uh, I couldn't believe that, uh, he, he would do it the night before the fight. So, is there a Holland symbol out there somewhere where he lives? Like, is there, like, do they flash out Holland? Do you guys go, Oh, not work to do again. <laughs> right yeah. yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, there must be, because I don't know how, how a guy encounters this many things in the past little while. Uh, pretty uh, pretty incredible that he was, uh, yeah, involved in this again. Yes, it is, it's absolutely incredible. But I guess if there's anybody that could possibly handle any kind of situation like that, would be a person like him. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's and not true. hurt himself and not hurt the uh, person committing the crime. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, we've talked about, uh, obviously, all these knockouts and all these finishes, but uh, this fight at lightweight between uh, Demir Ismagulov and Guran Kumaletse, uh, holy cow, um, a hell of a fight uh, that went to a decision. Uh, I was really impressed with both guys. They uh, they showed uh, great stamina, a lot of amazing, amazing striking, and and this was a war that um, turned out great. I, I I was thoroughly entertained throughout the whole fifteen minutes of this one. There's so much to go over for both men, but they're like I was just impressed. I was impressed with their overall MMA skill, which was high notch, top level. Yeah. I expect both of these men at some point in time, I'm just going to say it, to be in the top 10. Like, their skills are ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, they're ridiculously impressive, man. Like, yeah. they're just the, just the diversity attacks from both men. I, I especially love the fact that Isma Gulov did make some slight technical 
um, changes to the fight that managed to get him back into the fight because I thought Kudeledze was really leading the dance in the first round. And then Uzmagulov was able to just better manage his distance to get fighting Kutaletze. But it was just, it was a game of literally inches with those guys. Yeah. Just a little bit of tactical this or a tactical that, switching this, switching that. Like, it, I was impressed. I was yeah. Just, I was um, I'm not sure uh, if this had any change to the outcome of the fight, but there was a very strange occurrence right at the end of the third round. Uh, there, Herb Dean saw a knee that he deemed illegal. Um, some of the leg definitely looked like it impacted his head, but uh, the the knee uh, really impacted the chest or his upper body. Um, there was a delay, and then uh, the, the, the clock actually kept running for a little while. Uh, they only got about eight seconds in once the, the delay was there, but um, what did you think? Did you think Herb... Uh, you know, jumped in when he shouldn't have? Uh, okay, you know what? Sometimes it sometimes it's just about positioning, and sometimes, unfortunately, the referee is in the wrong position because the change of position happened too fast. On the instant replay, it looked like he could have got clipped or grazed, but it was really close. Yeah. Like, it was, like it was really close. Like, the knee either just grazed the chin or it did clip the chin, but definitely more the impact was definitely the chest. Yeah. Definitely, definitely the chest. So I can't really kill the guy on getting in there on thinking on what he thought was a legal strike because on the instant replay, when you look at it again, it was close, man. Yeah. Really close. Yeah, you do see his head snap back a little mm -hmm. bit. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it um, it would have been really hard to, to tell at fight speed like that. Uh, man, I, I really like this Georgian Viking. Can't wait to see him some more. Um, he was uh, he was highly skilled and and uh, he looked really disappointed when the decision was read. But um, yeah, it was uh, it, it was um, uh, Demir's night for sure. Um, the one thing about Demir that I noticed is uh, he has a he has either Tourette syndrome or he has um, some type of really bad nervous tick to his eye and his eye. face. Yeah, and um, that must be so tough to uh, to have to fight when that's that's happening and the, throughout the entire fight. At first, I think I remember the analyst saying, "Ah, I think he might have gotten injured in the eye," but then I was like, "I don't think so," because I think he's been doing that from the beginning of the fight. Yeah, it was, it was super noticeable and. Yeah, I would have to say definitely that would have to be a, like a, an adjustment to the way that you fight. But at the same time, if it's always been happening ever since you've been fighting, you should be probably pretty adjusted to it. But still, it's it would it would still be kind of a tricky thing because like what if a guy's throwing a punch or a kick at that exact same moment that you're doing that? Yeah. Right? It can make it uh, kind of disadvantage, uh, very much a disadvantage to you. Yeah, you'd think it would be very, very much of a disadvantage, and uh, yeah, but um, yeah, somehow uh, he you know keeps winning. That's five fights in a row. Uh, he's tied for the fourth longest active win streaks in the USC lightweight division. Uh, the champ Charles Oliveira has the longest win streak at eleven. Islam Makhachev has nine in a row. Daryush has seven, and then Demir is tied with Fiziev. Pulas and Sarukian, all with five wins uh, in a row in the lightweight division. So, um, yeah, starting to join the upper elite there, and uh, that was a that was a fun fight. Uh, even though we didn't get a finish, um, I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, but speaking of finishes, uh, mm -hmm. this middleweight fight between RoboCop and the Cuban Missile Crisis was really a massive battle. Uh, but RoboCop, holy cow, once he started landing some of his power shots, uh, Marquez was in trouble. He threw, he tried throwing some shots back, and, and once I, I really nailed him, but uh, Rodriguez was uh, not having it, and he just ended up coming in and finishing this off. Uh, holy cow, is this guy powerful. Yeah, he went full RoboCop mode and took his man out. Wow. I'll, I'll give Marquez all the credit in the world. That guy's got one heck of a chin. <laughs> it, it really does. Because wow. like 
there was times where I'm like, okay, the, the ref's going to jump. No, no, he's throwing back. The ref's going to jump. No, no, I, I guess he's kind of okay. No, nah, it, it's not looking good now. <laughs> he, he, he was tough. It yeah. took Rodriguez actually had to exercise some patience and just keep throwing his shots until he cut the man down. And yeah. that was pretty yeah, he was just uh, landing some huge power shots. He buckled Marquez a couple times and then just relentless uh, and just ruthless, just kept at it. Uh, Mike Beltran finally stopped it, but yeah, he could have jumped in and probably, probably a few times uh, and not had him take that much punishment, but he was giving him all the chances in the world uh, to, to get out of it. But uh, yeah, Rodriguez finally just... Came in and finished it off. Both guys are tough as hell. Um, yeah, like you say, Marquez has a chin on him because uh, most men would have been done very, 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 way, way, way sooner than uh, Marquez was. Oh, yeah. Most men would have been done way sooner than that. But I, I did appreciate that Beltran goes, I'll wait until he's flat on his back and I know the fight's over. <laughs> and that's basically what he did. And then Marquez was like, ah, oh, I'm done. It's like, now the fight's so. over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was uh, it was pretty amazing. What a performance! And uh, yeah, he's he's going uh, up the ranks for sure after that one. Uh, Marquez has had some injury troubles lately, but um, looked pretty good going in there. But uh, Rodriguez was uh, the better man that night. Boom! Just got the huge KO. Uh, the bantamweight fight between Adrian Yanez and Tony Kelly was uh, really highly contested. I guess Tony Kelly had flipped off the Texas crowd during the weigh-ins. Uh, he wanted to be the villain and the heel. Uh, Yanez is a Texas guy. Uh, came in probably the fan favorite. And uh, he really, really looked awesome. He looked like he really wanted to show how tough Texans were and... Holy, uh, that was that was an um, that was probably the best performance I've seen from Yanez, and he's on a hell of a winning streak as well. Yes, he is. But uh, I guess uh, Kelly learned something. Don't mess with Texas. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> because I, I'll, I'll tell you this: I was hyped after hearing his post fight. Like Yanez was in that to win it. He's like, "Oh, he's, you're gonna do that to my people." My crowd? Oh man! And then he just he went off and he surgically took Kelly apart. Yeah, he took him apart. Jeez. Hurt him, hurt him badly, and just took him out. Man, I I was impressed. I mean, yeah, was wow, it was it was awesome. He he was just um, so uh, accurate with his strikes and just was uh, just relentless. Um, just did not st st uh, does not stop until um, he was able to put him out and um yeah he he had a great post fight uh, commentary as he said um he said that uh, sean o'malley and nate manis have both called him out so he said yeah i'll take on them both bring them on bring them on uh, i'm ready uh he's got uh, nine nine fight winning streak five and oh in the ufc um he's he's one of those guys that uh you know they they, they list for the ufc winning streak um uh, he's He's got five uh, in that division. All Joe's the longest with seven. Uh, Mirab Devashvili has six. And TJ Dillashaw and Jack Shore and Yanis now all have five. <clears throat> and uh, Mirab Devashvili is uh, just about to fight Jose Aldo. So, uh, yeah, we'll see uh, him in the cage soon. But, um, yeah, Yanis, uh, sure, love being the hometown boy. Uh, they love their, uh, their guys in Texas and, um, yeah, a pretty, really cool way to kick off the main card and, uh, yeah, see, see the Texas crowd get fully into it and, uh, get to cheer on their boy like that. It was, it was awesome. So, um, prelims, uh, we should blast through it a bit. Um, our Canadian girl, Jasmine, Jezza, Jasada Vicious, uh, she, she um, was thoroughly, thoroughly overmatched by Natalia Silva. Uh, it's been three years since Silva's been in the cage, and she's obviously been training very, very heavily. Uh, her UFC uh, debut, I guess uh, they said, 
Um, but uh, she has, um, yeah, she just came in and just uh, was able to dominate in incredible fashion uh, in this one. Just the vicious couldn't find her. No, she had, like her like the the way that Silva just sniped her from the outside. Uh, no tells on her ticks. Amazing, amazing combinations of uh, punches and stuff. Wow. Her combos were fantastic. And then where Jasper Vicious thought she had the advantage in the grappling, she did not. No. She did not have that advantage. No. She either got reversed or judo throwed herself. Yeah. Uh, met numerous times throughout that fight. I, first off, I was thoroughly impressed. I'm like looking at Silva going, is this a veteran? Like, who, who, who is this? Yeah. I, I, wow. Like she... Jazz Vicious basically, it was like they were on two different tiers. Yeah. That's tier one and that's tier two or three. Like you, yeah. she could not hang with that woman. No. Whatsoever. And she was trying to get her down, which was uh, yeah. she, where she thought she had the advantage, but, uh, you know, she wasn't, was unable to. And she just, and Silva's movement, uh, her combinations, uh, just uh, spectacular. She, yeah, she looked like one of the elite fighters in that division. And, and uh, yes. yeah, it, it blew me away. I, I really, wasn't expecting a ton from her. Uh, nobody was. She was the underdog big time. And, uh, yeah, she just came in and uh, showed what she's got. No, that's no underdog. That That's somebody that looks like she should belong in the top 15, if not the top 10. Yeah. She was she was that impressive. I was like, wow. Like, even her balance, her take that, like, just everything about her yeah. completely outmatched her opponent. Oh, it, was, <laughs> it was great. Yeah, can't wait to see her again. Uh, back to the drawing board for the Canadian, but uh, she's still a great fighter. I think uh, just uh, styles make fights, as they say, and, uh, yeah, they need to find find a different type of opponent for her. Um, okay, Jeremiah Wells. Holy cow. Uh, he took a veteran and just threw a left hook that just put Court McGee out. Uh, one of those walk-off KOs, just bam, uh wells looked phenomenal and uh yeah to to do that to court mcgee uh very very impressive that's scary power that's scary power and it didn't take him long i believe that was nine within 90 seconds yeah 90 seconds that's all yeah. it took it was just like we're just gonna trade a couple punches and court watch out for the left <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. and it's over all yeah. right <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah, he yeah, so much power there, and uh, yeah, he, he yeah, he danced around a little bit, and then he showed off that amazing, amazing strong power. He's super dangerous, and uh, Herb Dean had to jump in there. Herb Dean was actually quite far away. You you mentioned that a couple fights ago. He was quite far away when that knockdown happened, and Court took a couple of unnecessary <laughs> shots while he was down, but. Uh, yeah, like you say, uh, you just never know sometimes when you're the ref, if you're in the right position at the right time. Yeah, no, he, he literally had to sprint because he's like, court's already out. <laughs> oh, start, <laughs> stop punching him. <laughs> yeah, holy cow, man. That was crazy. Uh, he called out Alex Moreno. Uh, that, that would be a hell of a fight and hopefully they can make that happen. Um, usually they start making fights, uh, Tuesdays. So uh, we'll keep our eye out, and if I hear anything, I'll I'll let our viewers and listeners know. Um, okay, uh, this was another uh, great fight on the featherweight uh, side of things. Uh, Ricardo Ramos, uh, one of the nicest spinning up elbows that I've ever seen, just perfectly placed, uh, just put Chavez out just uh, so quick, just boom, just sort of stunned him. And then he just wasn't able to be there anymore. Took a couple shots and gone. Um, wow, what a what a lethal strike that was. Chavez is a nice fighter. Like, his stand-up is nice. But Ramos was able to draw him into that strike, so to speak. He set it up beautifully. Yeah. Like, you see him set it up, and you're just like, is he, is he setting up for the spit? Like, that's a hard, like, technique to hit on your opponent. Yeah. It is it's ridiculously hard. And he did it perfectly. Yeah. Pinpoint accuracy, perfect. Fight, fights over. Fights over, man. Yeah. I, I, I was very impressed with, uh, with the way that he did, did his whole setup for that, uh, for that knockout. Yeah, me too. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Cody Stanham looked uh, dangerous. That was his first KO 
uh, in the UFC. And uh, Eddie Wineland uh, took his gloves off, looked like he was going to make uh, his retirement announcement. Uh, he's only won one out of his last six fights. Um, mm-hmm. He's taken too much abuse lately. Um, I think, I hate saying this, but I think it might be time for Eddie Wineland to to find another career. Hopefully um, he can teach. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know, he's had a great career. But, um, yeah, he uh, he got knocked out severely badly again. And uh, Stamen looked great. But, um, yeah, Wineland, uh, yeah, he's uh, he just signed a new contract. But I, I think it's time to walk away. Yeah, yeah. Like, especially when you start taking, like, those knockouts. And they come frequently over and over again. And then now that you're entering... Let's say he's not in the twilight of his like he's not in the prime of his career. He's in the twilight of his career now. Mm-hmm. So now that that's continually happening, he has to take a serious look at maybe stepping away before he starts incurring real damage that will last him for the rest of his life. Yeah, yeah. Really got to consider that. Um, the the uh, the fight between Phil Hawes and Darren Wynn was uh, yeah, it lasted a couple rounds, but uh, Phil Hawes was angry man. He is a powerful man. He is a scary man. He even wanted to beat up DC after the fight. Uh, he wanted to take on everybody. Uh, not sure what uh, made him so angry, but um, man, uh, when this guy starts landing shots, uh, it is ruthless and scary, and he is one massive, powerful man. Yeah, it's just an avalanche of punches, and then it's just like the power. It's almost like he keeps powering up. His power, his punches are getting more powerful. It's not good. This is not yeah. good. He, he, yeah, he took it to Darren Wynn, and it was a great, great uh, uh, KO win for him. But I think the thing with DC that there was some sort of miscommunication. He thought that DC, I think, was wanted Darren Wynn to win, yeah. and was disrespecting him in, in that respect. And where I, I, apparently DC was like, "That wasn't my intention at all." He just completely misunderstood where I was going with my, whatever his comment was. So yeah. apparently, Hawes. Uh, apologized yeah. later, later once cooler heads prevailed and stuff. So yeah, I heard that. Um, Darren Wynn uh, is with AKA. He's a um, he's a uh, DC is one of his mentors. He's been a coach for him. Uh, you know, he he definitely has brought him along in his uh, relatively short MMA career. Uh, DC said he doesn't make predictions. He he wasn't you know trying to be. Uh, biased on the one side he was just commentating on the fight uh Hawes had took offense to saying that he picked the wrong horse he 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 went with the wrong guy but uh you know when you got a guy in your camp and you know you're trying to bring him along give him an MMA career you're gonna do that uh I, I you know unfortunately DC might you know fall might have situations like this happen but he said he doesn't he doesn't you know he, he doesn't do that he doesn't you know, when he's commentating, he doesn't favor one guy or the other because he knows the guy. And I think Hawes realized that he was just being a hothead and he did apologize uh, a few times profusely. And uh, hopefully it's just water under the bridge. Uh, and, um, yeah, we can move forward. Yeah, well, he did He did say within one of the apologies, please, DC, don't beat me up, which is a good idea because, you know, he may be retired, but I think he's still got a little left in the tank if he really yeah. wants that and, I, and Hawes did not. It's but. something that I noticed a lot through the the, the commentary, how much um, Dominic Cruz was, uh, re, you know, referring to DC as a legend and asking him to break down a lot of stuff because, you know, his decorated career, he's got, you know, two two belts and two weight classes. And, you know, one of the, really one of the classiest guys out there. And I, I really, I really actually liked Cruz and and DC together, I thought they were a good combination. Yeah, yeah, they are, and, and but they have their moments too as well. Like there's there's been many times where where Cruz has been very critical of DC as well. But at the end of the day, DC is still DC, and he can work with anybody, right? Yeah. And I I think some of the stuff, some of the comments that Cruz has made about DC's professionalism has been warranted, and I've noticed. I think there's definitely been a change. Nice. It's definitely been a change. So it's 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 good. Yeah, they're they're a great team. Great Joe team. Rog- Joe Rogan was in the crowd. First time he said he's been in the crowd watching in 20 years. He has not been able to just sit and and watch it uh, not commentating. 
Uh, that was pretty wild. Yeah. I saw him in there and I go, what are you doing? Aren't you supposed to be working? I didn't like it at all. No. That guy could not do that anymore. <laughs> it totally messed me up. I was just like, why is he watching the fights? Why am I not hearing his voice? <laughs> uh, I, again, I'm going to need to tweet about this and Joe. I go, hey, I understand that you're allowed to have your life. I get it. But not at a UFC event. That's when you're supposed to be working. Should right? be working. Yeah, yeah. For all times. All times. <laughs> right. <laughs> all right. Well, I can't wait for that tweet, too. Uh, you're stirring some stuff up. It's going to be fun. Going to be yeah. a fun week. Yeah, no, it's going to be great. Like, but these people need to know. They need to know. Like, Joe needs to know. What are you doing? You can't just be out there enjoying life like what, what's wrong with you i'm talking about the fights i love it i love it okay can't wait keep your eye out everyone uh yeah what's your we, we got to figure your twitter handle we'll put it on the website All right, sure. there you go. um roman delice kicked off the whole entire night with a a massive quick tko of kyle Dawkins with a knee that was ruthless and um yeah i i don't know it just seemed to just snowball those KOs through the whole entire night. But um, Delice looked really good. Yeah, Delice did look really good. Like, uh, yeah, he really looked very, very good because I honestly, I, I had Dawkins winning this fight. I was completely wrong there. Uh, but that knee was vicious. Um, it was well placed and well timed. Uh, and also, too, again, like you said, it was just a snowball effect where people like, well, if that's the way it's going to be, then I guess that's the way it's going to be. Going to yeah. have to knock out my guy next. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, it was awesome. I uh, I loved it, and uh, great great way to start the card. Uh, incredible fights throughout, and uh, we're we're getting spoiled, man. We are just getting to see some amazing, amazing action. Are yeah, you know. watching the fight on TV right now? The Are you watching the hockey game, or what are you watching? No, 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 not oh. not watching a hockey game. Not okay. watching a hockey game. There's there's a, there's a brawl right now. Oh, oh, oh great! They just, uh, yeah, they just had a bunch of fights going on. Yeah, hey, Colorado's getting frustrated. Do you know how it is, man? You know how that goes. It's like they're embarrassing us. You know what we got to do? Put a physical stamp on this game, then. <laughs> yeah. We got fights now. <laughs> yeah. Do you you remember when uh, Calgary? Came in and Torts uh, ended up throwing out his his you know enforcers against Calgary's enforcers and they just dropped the gloves immediately and then Torts tried to get in the locker room and everything and yeah that, you know the good old days of hockey. Oh no, I I remember that, but you know what I actually really remember where I go, my goodness, is he short? Has he always been that short? I didn't know he was that short, man. Yeah, he's a tiny like, little guy. Yeah, yeah, because then I was just like, he's not getting in there. As much as he liked it, he's, he's not good. <laughs> no, he's not. Uh, he just got hired again. He uh, he just got hired by the Philadelphia Flyers this week. Four-year contract uh, back in the NHL, unfortunately. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the little guy is back, and uh, I'm sure there's going to be some shenanigans very soon. Yeah, I wonder who's the next locker room he's going to be like, okay, I'm getting in there. I'm going to get a piece of somebody. It's going to be great. <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't put it past them. Uh, they, you know, in Philly, uh, the Flyers were always known for being a tough team. They won some cups back in the 70s where they were called the Broad Street Bullies or where they just absolutely hammered guys. Uh, they had Dave the Hammer Schultz who got like 400 to 500 penalty minutes a year and nobody wanted to skate into the corner to get the puck because he would just get in there and just boom and crash and then just punch the guy into submission. And, and they had they had a lot of skilled guys, but they had some serious heavyweight battles and, and they used to just intimidate the hell out of teams. And uh, I, I heard somebody mentioning, I think it was Jeff Merrick mentioning that um, Torts uh, reminds him of the former coach of the F Flyers back then, Fred Shiro. And uh, he said, uh, Torts said he would love to see old time hockey back like that. And, but he said, unfortunately, he doesn't think it'll ever happen again. Uh, yeah, because the league won't let it happen again. Because no. they've, they've, kind of, they've kind of got that out of their, uh, out of the, out of, out of the league by, with their, their, their rule changes and just the, with the way the game is played. Yeah, you're, you're right. Exactly. Yeah. So, 
Um, okay, uh, let's just uh, look ahead briefly to next week's card. Uh, we've got a, the main event between Armin Sarukian and Mateus Gamrot, uh, both uh, in the lightweight division. It's a five-round fight between Sarukian, who's number 11, and Gamrot, number 12. Uh, both these guys are, are tough. This should be a, a really, really good battle. Should be an excellent battle. Should be a fantastic battle because of the fact that they're both on the rise and they're both on the outside looking into the top 10. They yeah. both want that spot. So this is, this, this is going to be a war. It's yeah. going to be a war. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Uh, the co-main should be fun. Neil Magny's always able to bring it. Uh, Shavkat Rachmanov, uh, they, uh, he's number 15 in the division. Magny's number 10. Uh, good welterweight battle ahead. Yeah. And it's a, it's a great tester for Rachmanov. I, I'm, I'm curious to see if he can keep his undefeated streak alive against a real challenger, Neil Magny. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Some of the other fights that jump out to, to me is the, uh, the younger Nurga Medoff um, against Nate Manis, who was called out uh, this weekend. Uh, we've got, um, yeah, we've got uh, Chris Curtis, Ru Rudolfo Vieira. That'll be great to kick off the main card. Um, let's see some of the prelims. Uh, what jumps out to you on the prelims that you'd like to see? Uh, the Brian Kelleher uh, fight, uh, which is the second fight in against... Uh, uh, Mario Bautista. I like Kelleher, and uh, I, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to seeing him fight again. Seeing if there's any new wrinkles to his game that he's added. Yeah, uh, JP Bays and Cody Durden should be fun. Uh, and then the feature fight on the prelims is in the light heavyweight division. A uh, couple of young up and comers: Carlos Alberg, uh, six and one in his career, and uh, Enj uh six and two, uh, coming in. Um, yeah, I, I, it's going to be a banger. Uh, we'll, it's back to uh, normal times, 4 o'clock prelim, 7 o'clock main card. Um, yeah, it's not stacked like uh, some of the cards we've seen, but uh, as we've found out recently, uh, never, never uh, miss some of these because you're probably uh, going to miss out on a, a hell of a great night of uh, entertaining fights. Yeah, uh, you, you can't count anybody out. You can't count any of these cards out. You just never know. You just never know when there's just going to be a great night of fights just around the corner. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I saw some of the uh, footage of Joe Lozon. Uh, man, uh, he looks like he has a pretty serious knee injury. He said he couldn't put any weight on it. Uh, he said they shot him up with, with um, some kind of uh, numbing. Uh, for his knee, but uh, he just, yeah, was completely unable to put any weight on it. Uh, I don't think they've exactly uh, done any kind of scope or anything to see what's going on. Uh, they were supposed to fight UC EOC 274, and that was when uh, this Cowboy said he got some stomach flu, uh, some he ate some bad food or something, uh, and Dana White said, you know, this, this, this fight's never going to happen. Uh, we've already given it a few chances, and it's, it's never going to uh, come together. Um, we just, yeah, we, we're just going to move on. So uh, hopefully Lozon can get back soon. Uh, hopefully they can find uh, an opponent for Cowboy quick. Yeah, hopefully that can happen because, and also too, you know what? Sometimes things happen for a reason. Yeah, That's the way I looked at that because of just the nature of his injury where he basically said, I'm I was putting on a sock and my knee locked up yeah. to the point that I couldn't even walk on it. Yeah. that's actually kind of that's terrifying and that's very worrying because yeah. like what's going on there like why did that even happen very weird right? yeah yeah so it's, like, it's, it's an incredibly weird a very very weird like injury it's something that obviously needs to be addressed and i hope that everything's fine after a length of time for joe lozon if we can see him in the octagon again yeah. but if we don't and if this is something more serious then you know i'm glad it happened before the fight actually happened. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, yeah, we hate we hate seeing uh, guys get uh, and you know pre-existing injury and then it happens inside the cage. It it can really exacerbate it, make it a lot worse. So uh, yeah, good. It got caught uh, before that fight, and uh, but we you know I was really excited about seeing those guys.
bang, they're both uh, amazing veterans, and it would have been it would have been fun. But um, yeah, I'm sure Cowboy wants to get back at it really soon after having to cut his cut the weight and get himself ready. And then uh, just last minute, you know, they weighed in. Both of them weighed in, and they were ready to go. And then boom, this happened. Uh, yeah, pretty tough. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. But at least Cowboy looked really good for that that night out. Because like, he was ready. He was ready to step out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I saw him in the crowd with his kids and his wife and stuff. It was great uh, that he was uh, that he was still around. And, uh, yeah, the, the fans sure appreciated seeing him there. Um, okay, let's put the UFC to bed. Let's talk about the NBA. We had a, a new champion crowned for the 2021-2022 season. Uh, the Golden State Warriors are back on top of the world. After two years of injury troubles that uh, derailed them and put them uh, out of the playoffs, uh, they they were uh, you know a team. I think I think there's only been one team, maybe two teams in history that went from worst to, f- to champion within that couple year period like that. Uh, they were able to you know get healthy finally and and pull it all together. Uh, masterful performance by Steph Curry. Uh, finally getting that last thing on his resume that he didn't have, finals MVP. Uh, started. St- people are starting to talk to him about him as being one of those top 10, top 5 guys of all time now with four titles. Uh, I, I kind of think that he's become the second greatest point guard of all time. And, uh, you know, he was already the greatest shooter of all time. What, a, what an amazing year he's had. And uh, it was great to see them finally climb back to the top of the mountain and and get that title uh it was it was fun to watch and and just the fact that this was the one title that i think if you looked at anybody from the organization top to bottom would say was the most unexpected so that means that was the best one to get out of the four i think that's why you saw stephen curry show that much emotion yeah once he won because he realizes like Oh my God! Like I can't believe we actually did it. Yeah, you know, like it doesn't get more fairy tale than that. Because for those two years where they didn't make the playoffs and or whatever, you know, they didn't make the playoffs. They were suffering. They were in the tank a little bit. It's because Steph got hurt and Clay wasn't even with the team. Yeah. All of a sudden, Clay comes back. They win. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's yeah. and it's, it's so obvious to me who, who the missing piece was. They need all their pieces to be there for them to win. And that's their, that's their big three of Green, Thompson, and Curry. Yeah. You have those three, you're always going to give yourself a chance to win. And then also, too, with the added fact that now all their young guys are coming up. Yeah. They're, they're developing. The fact that Wiggins, who they got, and people thought they would just use him as a trade piece, but the organization's like, no, actually, this kid got done a raw deal. His... Uh, his player development in Minnesota was garbage. Yeah. So we're going to fix all of that. All of a sudden, he's an all-star. He's yeah. one of the best wing defenders in in the league. So great. Locked up Tatum and Brown every time he went up against them. Yeah, yeah man. It Incredible. was yeah, it was great. Uh, what a, what an added piece, and uh, great to see a Canadian. Uh, he set the record for the most points by a Canadian in a final. We've seen a lot of Canadian players be able to. Uh, raise the Larry O'Brien trophy and, and uh, add a championship to their resume. But um, he was such an integral piece to this, this run. And uh, yeah, like you say, he was, you know, defending the, the, the Celtics top scorer, their number one guy. And um, yeah. And, and some of the performances, the rebounding he had uh, the, you know, the amazing, uh, you know, the, the dunk that he threw down, uh, you know, in the last game. Oh man, he was just, he was just playing uh, incredible, and and uh, yeah, they definitely misused him in Minnesota because uh, once he he came to Golden State, uh, he's emerged as one of the top players in the league. Yeah, man. Like, and also too, like he, even when he was in Minnesota, he was not that committed on defense. But Golden State looked at him and said, "No, oh, you can be really good at it. We're gonna teach you how to be there, how to get there, how to be that guy. But we're just gonna need you to put in the effort." And yeah. Wiggins like. Okay, deal. <laughs> yeah. That's what he did. Like it's just, I'm super impressed with where Wiggins was and to where he is today. 
Yeah. Um, I, I think he's a central piece that Golden State should seriously look at keeping. Yeah. Whatever the cost is, should, that yeah. guy fits perfectly within the scope of what you want to do on defense and offense. And sometimes it's not about getting the prettiest thing out on the market. Sometimes it's just about you work in our system. Yeah. Done. Yeah. That's done. Yeah. yeah. You work. So I can't wait to tell to talk about some of the salaries and all the things that have gone into uh, what you know, putting this team together and and the the future. But I, I do want to mention first of all, um, uh, Steph Curry's uh, emotional outburst. He started crying right before the game even ended. It, it just seemed to mean so much to him. I think um, you know, uh, doubt started to creep in. You know, you start getting into your mid thirties. You haven't even made the playoffs for a couple years. Other teams have retooled and started to you know become pretty elite. Phoenix was much better than them this year. Memphis was ahead of them in the standings. Uh, they had some, you know, some difficulties through the playoffs. But, uh, yeah, it really seemed to hit him in a very emotional way. And uh, I, don't, I don't remember ever seeing him uh, that touched by, uh, by winning ever. I, I just no. think it was the, 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 the biggest one for him ever. Yeah, and, yeah, I, I, I completely agree. I think it was one of... It was one of the ones that meant the most to him yeah. because of this, I think, the journey to get to this one as opposed to the other three before it. I yeah. think that was the journey. And then once he got there, he got there. And then even even Draymond Green had his struggles uh, in this series, in yeah. this final series. But his best game, he I guess he kept the best for last. Yeah. 12 points, 12 rebounds, 8 assists. He almost had a triple-double. And his defense was as, as, as top-notch. A class, S class, whatever you want to call it, vintage Draymond, vintage yeah. Draymond defense. He brought it. He looked fantastic doing it. Yeah. Um, as I said, I think Steph Curry became the second greatest point guard of all time. I think Magic Johnson still has the mantle as as number one, uh, five titles and and the things that he could do as a point guard. Uh, Steph is a, a new point guard, not you know, not the same as uh, you know CP3. John Stockton, a lot of the guys that we saw growing up, uh, you know, just a complete guy that came in and, and changed the game. Uh, the game has been fully changed since Steph came in. Um, since 2013-2014, uh, Steph and Clay and only one other player had made about had made 525 three-point attempts that year, 2013-2014. In this past season, there were 20 players that made those many attempts or more in the league. So Steph came in, Clay came in, they started shooting the lights out. Uh, most teams have suddenly, you know, changed their style and they're shooting an unprecedented amount of threes. And um, he's the only third player to get a finals MVP that's six foot two. Um, Isaiah Thomas and Tony Parker, the others. There's only actually 33 players in the history of basketball that have finals MVP trophies out of the 75-year history of the NBA. There's only 33 guys, so he joins a very, very, very elite class. He joins an elite class for sure with, with uh, regular season MVP, all-star MVP, four championships, you know, all this, all, all these accolades. Um, yeah, he's, he's to me, he's one of the top, I would say top five players of all time now. And uh, he's not done. He's only 34. I think he can play for a few more years and and still be very, very elite. Oh, yeah, of course. Like, for me, like, when you talk about, you start talking about having discussions about top, top five, top ten ever. That means Stephen Curry has now been able to take somebody out of that, where that hasn't changed in decades. <laughs> You're just like, no. I'm just going to switch this guy out. <laughs> Which is wow, yeah. That guy, because anybody that you take out of your top ten, you're just you're talking about Hall of Famers, multiple MVPs, but like winners, yeah, Win and guys that have Winner. never really fallen off in their entire career. That's what you're talking about. But yeah. that's what he's doing right now. And I just want to add this: there's a chance, there's a chance that if if they can keep this thing going, if they can keep their core there and all the right pieces around them, he could potentially match Michael. Yeah. Six. 
Yeah. It's not out of the realm of possibility anymore. Yeah. It is. Yeah, it's pretty shocking. Amazing. Yep. Um, you know, just I, I was just looking at some of the players that he's been able to beat in the playoffs in this era. Uh, LeBron, Kawhi, KD, Lillard, Harden, Westbrook, AD, Mitchell. Uh, you know, they've been able to dispatch all those guys that are you know, elite players in this decade. This year, he was able to dispatch Jokic, John Morant, Luka Doncic, Jason Tatum, um, you know, uh, a class, a new class of guys that are coming in that are trying to take over that mantle. And, um, yeah, he's he's in that, you know, definitely in that top 10 now, in my opinion. And look out, uh, he's not done. Uh, they will have some hard decisions to make in this yeah. off season. Uh, they their payroll this past year was uh, three hundred and fifty uh, three hundred and fifty eight million dollars. They had to pay with luxury tax and salary. Uh, nine players are under contract, and um, they have to figure out what they're going to do with a lot of the the guys that aren't. Um, I, I want to list off their salaries. Uh, it's incredible. Uh, Steph Curry's salary uh, is forty, just over forty-eight million. Clay's is just over forty. Wiggins thirty-three and a half million. Draymond Green twenty-five point eight, and then you've got Wiseman nine point six, Kaminga five point seven, and then Poole three point nine, almost four million. Moody. 3.75 and then uh so their their uh, total salary was 173 million with a luxury tax bill on top of that which was 85 million uh so they were yeah paying a hell of a lot of money um but they're talking about if they sign some of these other guys that are um uh, you know some of the guys that are free agents uh, and aren't under contract. Uh, they got to get Wiseman under contract, uh, Gary Payton II, uh, Porter, Looney, Bielichka, and uh, they're going to make a draft pick on Thursday. There's NBA drafts Thursday. Uh, so they're looking at probably between 425 and $500 million for our luxury tax and uh, for salary and luxury tax heading into next year, uh, I, it's it's blowing everybody's mind. Uh, if they want to try to keep this whole thing together, they're probably going to have to pay close to five hundred million dollars. Uh, can they do it? Ooh, that's a lot of that is a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Um, but. I guess it depends on what the owner's willing to spend. Now, if they're willing to do it like, you know, uh, I'm going to go to a different sport here for a second, the St. Louis Rams and just be like, we got money because we're rich. <laughs> yeah. They want to do it like that. Yeah, they can, they can get it done. I, it's, it's just, it's a kind of a hard one to swallow, but at the same time, oh man, does it feel real good holding that championship, that championship in your arms. Like, and, and cradling it and taking it to bed with you so you can sleep with it. <laughs> so good. So I don't know if they'll do it. I don't know if they'll do it. But there's a couple people from that list that need to be signed that I'd love to see them come uh, bring back. I love Bielitsa because he's a super in, highly intelligent player. And he fits yeah. within the system. But actually, you know what? All those guys do. All of those guys do because they all contribute in some way. I just hope that Gary Payton II, like, selfishly for me, is able to stay on the team somehow. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. It fits that team like a glove. Yeah. Ah, did you see what I just did there? Like, like a, glove. a glove. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> you, you mentioned the St. Louis Rams uh, spending lots of money, but the NFL salary cap is $208 million, So that's all. That's the most anybody's spent in the NFL so far. NHL salary cap is only $82.5 million. Nobody spent more than that. This year, the... Los Angeles Dodgers in baseball, where they have no cap, uh, they are on the hook, on track right now for three hundred and fifty-seven million dollars this year. 
Uh, but uh, the salary and luxury tax in 2021-22 paid out by the Golden State Warriors was worth $346 million. And uh, as I said, only nine players under contract trying to get six more in and having to, uh, yeah, try to, to, to fit it. Uh, the, the owner must be a little bit nervous having to uh, sign these massive, massive checks for these guys. Uh, I did see the revenue estimates for this playoff run. They made roughly about $132 million for this playoff run. Uh, they said about $7 million per home game in the first two rounds. Uh, then it went up to about $10 million per home game for the Western Conference uh, Finals. And then the Finals uh, doubled that. They made about $20 million per home game. So that adds up to about $132 million. So that really um, helps the bottom line and uh, stops the bleeding so much. But... Um, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I know that they want to um, keep all these guys. I don't know if it's possible, but uh, Wiseman should be somebody that they lean on a little bit more. Maybe Looney goes uh, if Wiseman emerges. Um, I don't know if they'll be able to keep Porter. Uh, yeah. yeah, Peyton is is necessary, but um, yeah, when you're talking four hundred to five hundred million dollars <laughs> <laughs> to try to keep these guys together to make another run. Uh, it's crazy, and I mentioned to somebody recently, uh, the Oakland A's cried poor all the time. They'd had that money ball, and uh, they always said, oh, they could never compete with the elite teams in, in uh, baseball, the New York Yankees, the Boston Red Sox teams, Dodgers. Uh, but why in the same city the Golden State Warriors were able to assemble this team? Uh, they have moved across the bay now, but... Same area, and they're able to spend this kind of money. I don't know why Oakland is lying to their fans because, uh, you know, they should be able to spend the money and bring in the talent that they need, too. Well, you know, some owners are just like, I would rather all of that money that I could give the players and that the fans would be really happy to see because it's like, our team is awesome, and just put it in my pocket. <laughs> and then tell people, I got a million bucks to try to put together a team here. That's about all I got. <laughs> it's gonna be hard. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, and, and that's kind of what they did. I think that's yeah. what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. There's uh, there's talk that uh, Kevon Looney's uh, gonna garner about ten and a half million. Peyton about ten. Wiseman nine point six. Kaminga, uh, Otto Porter about six point four. Pool uh, four million. Uh, Bielichka two and a half. So. Um, Crazy, and then their their draft pick on Thursday. They think uh, with that twenty eighth pick, um, you get about a two point two million dollar guy, and then they have minimum salary. Minimum salary in NBA right now one point seven two million dollars. That's minimum. Can't pay a guy less than that. So <laughs> imagine, imagine just having to <laughs> sign those checks. Like, oh God, like. That would be tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just have to say, all right, I'm just, I'm just going to pretend like it's a boxing match. Cut me, Mick. Cut me. <laughs> and then just start siding. Blood. With your own blood. Sweat and blood. <laughs> That's it. Just sign it in blood. Eh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, speaking of uh, contracts and salaries, uh, Kyrie Irvin has decided to opt out of his contract with the Brooklyn Nets. Uh, thirty-six and a half million dollars. He said, "Ah, come on, that's peanuts. I got, I got kids. I gotta get paid. I gotta get paid." Uh, he wants a max deal. He wants a four-year max guaranteed deal. And Brooklyn has um has paused. They've they've, they've said, well, maybe let, let us think about that for a few days." Um, is he being ridiculous? Uh, with with his demands. Guaranteed max deal four years when he could barely show up for work last year. Well, that's the great thing about Kyrie Irving. When you live in your own head, you don't listen to anything or anybody, and you just go, "Nah, this is what it is. This is what I deserve." Well, then, yeah, that's your reality, which is it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, you're just gonna give this to me, right? But unfortunately, the Nets just went, "Oh, that's a weird reality. No, 
no, we're not going to give you any because <laughs> like, like, we can't depend on you. Like no. if we're supposed to be partners in this in this business venture, we don't show up. You're not here. Yeah. You know? like, where are you? <laughs> so I'm I'm sorry. Like yeah. we can't trust you at this point in time in this particular our our business relationship. We cannot trust you. So they're probably saying we'll sign you for a year for fifty because you're you're definitely worth it. But you're not will you're not worth it for me to put the risk out for a numerous amount of years going forward. No, you're not. Yeah. You're not. No. So. And he's he's the reason why the things blew up there. You know they had. They had uh, the beard, they had KD, they had Kyrie, and they had a lot of complimentary pieces that everybody thought, hey, this team could win it all. And, um, yeah, look at that. They flamed out. They got swept in the first round. And, and um, yeah, I we'll see. Uh, I've heard that there's a lot of interest in him uh, from the both L.A. teams and the his crosstown rival team, the New York Knicks. Um, I... I would be shocked if we went to the Lakers because he had a falling out with LeBron uh, years ago and couldn't play with him either. Uh, so, um, yeah, there's. I don't think there's a lot of teams that would be willing to put some guaranteed money down on this guy, but um, do you have any thoughts on where he might end up? Uh, he's, he's so wildly talented, right, that people are more than willing to try to take the risk on him. At the same time, it's like, well, if he destroys your locker room, well, I guess that was the risk, right? Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, you know, I, uh, I don't know if LeBron could be the bigger man and say, let bygones be bygones, let's bring him in and stuff like that. Because I, I've heard of this one, uh, one particular trade that kind of made sense. Maybe, maybe they like, because what I believe the Nets need is a big man, so maybe AD for for Kyrie straight across. Right, and maybe that something like that works. I don't know. I, it's going to be so hard. It's going to be so hard for to try to shop him in the right way, so to entice people. Because I'm sure a lot of everybody saw what was going on. It's just like, oh, he just kind of showed up for half the time, didn't he? All right. Yeah. It's I, yeah. I don't know. It's going to be hard. Yeah. Hard. If you can't depend on the guy, uh, yeah, I, I think it's better to move on and uh yeah get somebody that uh, at least you you know will show up for work every day and uh you know try it try their best but yeah, yeah. we'll see uh, he's pretty delusional I'm not sure uh, how many suitors will be out there he's a talent but uh mentally not uh <laughs> not worth what he's looking for so uh as i mentioned a few times uh nba draft on thursday out of chicago looking forward to it uh there's quite a few uh, very interesting scenarios. Orlando Magic have the number one overall pick. Uh, they have uh, some few guys in in mind. I uh, heard there there there's about four guys that they've worked out that they've talked to. Uh, they're they're trying to decide between. Uh, they could also um, make a trade. They have a lot of picks in this draft. A lot of uh, draft picks going forward over the next few years. Uh, we do. Remember some of the big draft picks that Orlando has made at number one? Uh, obviously, Shaquille O'Neal was their biggest uh, number one overall draft pick in 1992. Uh, they had a, a, an amazing year that year. Where they, they won 20 more games than they had the year before when Shaq was there. And then, But they just missed the playoffs by one game, and they made it into the lottery, and they won the lottery again that year. <laughs> Uh, they ended up picking Chris Weber, traded him draft night for Penny Hardaway, and multiple draft picks. Uh, some of those picks ended up becoming Vince Carter and Mike Miller. Uh, so they did really, really super well in those two drafts. Obviously, the big man, Penny Hardaway, uh, that team was elite for, for a few years while they were there. And their number one overall draft pick before, uh, I mean, after that was in 2004, and they selected uh, baby Superman Dwight Howard with that, and um, he he's had a, a long NBA career. Um, I'll mention some of the names that are slated to go top five: uh, Paolo Banchero, the point uh, or the power forward from Duke; uh, Jabari Smith, power forward from Auburn; uh, Shaden Shaden, uh, let's see his last name here: Shaden Sharp, Canadian guy. Uh, from London, Ontario. 
He's a shooting guard out of, out of Kentucky. Uh, and then Benedict Matherin, also Canadian guy, shooting guard out of Arizona. And Chet Holmgren, a center from Gonzaga. Um, and then we've got a bunch of Canadians that are that have declared for the draft. Uh, they think probably four of these guys are going to get their name called on draft night. As I mentioned, Shaden Sharp, Benedict Matherick, he's uh, out of Montreal. Uh, he's 6'6", 210 guard. Uh, Sharp is a 6'6", six, uh, six, six, two, 220 guard. Uh, and then Andrew Nebhart from um, Aurora, Ontario, Gonzaga. He's another guard, 6'5", 193 as he's listed at. Uh, we've got a high schooler, came out of Scarborough, plays for the Fort Erie's uh, High School. Uh, he's a 6'11", 200-pound uh, power forward. And then uh, we've got a guy out of Vancouver. His name is uh, Fardik Awak, I guess his last name is. Sorry if I butchered that. Uh, he played with Utah Valley. Uh, he's a center, 6'11", 245. And then a couple guys... Um, Caleb Houston out of Mississauga played with Michigan and um, he's been promised by one team supposedly to be picked in the first round uh, 6'8 forward uh, 205 pounds and then Emmanuel Acott out of Winnipeg Boise State 6'8 210 um, he supposedly hasn't garnered as much interest could go back to college um, there, there is something called COVID hardship. And, uh, if guys do declare and they don't get, uh, drafted, they can actually end up going back to school, which is a great thing. Um, good. yeah, really nice to hear, but, uh, a great list of Canadians. Um, yeah, at least two of them are supposed to be, uh, going probably lottery picks and maybe four guys picked in the, in the two first two rounds. Um, yeah, pretty exciting. No, that's awesome. That's it's it just shows where our, our the basketball in this country is has gotten to and how it continues to keep improving because you keep seeing more and more Canadians uh, taken in the first round, uh, which is just it's just amazing to see because yeah. at first you never even heard of a Canadian going into the lottery for the NBA for the longest time. But now it's it's constant. It's always every year. There's a couple. There's a couple more. There's a couple more. Right. Yeah. So. It's great to see, but I want to say this: out of that whole draft uh, of those names that you you mentioned, the most intriguing guy to me in this NBA draft is Chet Holmgren. Yeah, Chet Holmgren is just—I've I've watched him play, I've watched some video. Is is he's different? He's like he's just different. Like he cool. or a seven foot seven footer that has handles. The, the man needs to put on some size. I right? hate like yeah. that guy needs to live in the weight room for the next couple of years. Like exactly. live. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. everything else that he provides and that he's fluid, he's smooth. Ah, oh, man. I, I, I think he's going to be really good. Cool. I think he's going to yeah. be. Really good. I've heard a lot of interesting things about him and uh, I, I'm, I'm hoping that he goes high and goes to a great team. Yeah. It'd be Awesome to see. Yeah, he's he's a very interesting player, and um, yeah, it'll be gonna be fun to watch. But yeah, he's um yeah he's he's right up there in the, lots of the mock drafts. So we'll see uh, if he if he goes high. Um, there has been a trade supposedly already made between Dallas and Houston. Uh, Dallas is gonna pick twenty sixth in the draft, and they have already traded that pick. And four other players for Christian Wood. Uh, they've traded um, Sterling Brown, Trey Burke, Marquise Chris, and Boban Marjanovic, and the 26th rights to that 26th pick. Um, I guess Houston's going to tell them who to get, and then they're going to make culminate that trade on, on draft night. Uh, I'm sure there'll be tons more trades that have already happened. Um, I can't believe how many picks... Orlando has, OKC has, uh, who else? Uh, Minnesota, Cleveland, uh, a lot of teams that are on the outside looking in, uh, really trying to get guys through the draft and uh, rebuild their team quick. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, I, I've i always been a, been a fan of, like, rebuilding through the draft, like, because taking your time and getting the players or the pieces that you need 
so that you can find success on the court. I, I think that's a great way of doing things, a way, way of operating your basketball team. Now for OKC though, that I like, I don't know how talented their scouting uh, department is, but no. they're going to have a lot of practice. Jeez, yeah. In the next couple of years, yeah. they got a lot of practice, man. They because, have, they yeah. have so many picks. They have just crazy amount of picks in the next few years. It's amazing, yeah. I've never seen a team that has stockpiled that many picks ever, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how they pull it off. They'll they'll need uh, that Adam Sandler out there scouring the world to uh, try to get some uh, incredible picks. Yeah, like and if if they just hit on maybe. I don't know a third of all their their picks that they have. That's a super team. Yeah. They're, gonna, they're gonna make a super team. Like they're literally gonna make it. And they already got great pieces in place right now. Yeah. And, and yeah, it, it's. It, I think it's gonna look really good. I think the future looks really good for the OKC Thunder going forward. Uh, Toronto makes uh, their loan pick in the draft uh, unless um, anything changes uh, dra- uh, trade wise. But uh, they make their loan pick uh 33rd so we'll see if they're able to uncover a gem there um obviously last year scotty barnes uh falling to them and became becoming the uh, rookie of the year was really great drafting and uh, scouting and uh and able to get the the top player uh, in the draft even though they didn't have number one overall uh, and there's you know so many drafts where you know it wasn't the number one guy that emerged as the best talent in that draft so uh yeah i'm sure that none of the scouts are gonna get uh, very many hours of sleep this this uh week but uh, i'm excited love watching the draft seeing it change all these men's lives 58 picks will be made in chicago on thursday night and um yeah we'll break down a little bit uh next monday so can't wait um was there anything else that um you wanted to mention uh off the top uh, anything that comes to mind you know what? No, I guess the only thing I, I want to mention is this. Like, if I could put in a request, you know, to like God or something, I'm just gonna need that that warm weather, like you know, in the next couple of days. Like, I, like that's all it is. Like, don't don't tease me by saying it is coming and then you take it away from me. Don't do no. that. Don't do that. To <laughs> don't, me. don't play with my emotions that way. Don't do that. Just <laughs> give me my son and give me my warm weather. That's all I ask. Yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully he's listening. Uh, we need it. We really need it here. Uh, I do want to mention um, uh, some really exciting news just happened today. Uh, a former Atlanta Falcon uh, running back, Brian Hill, just signed with the BC Lions locally here. So uh, you should get some ticket. Go uh, see uh, one of the guys that carried the rock for your uh, your favorite team in the NFL. Uh, he had um, he dressed for. 39 games over four seasons with the team. He had uh, 200 carries for 945 yards, three touchdowns, caught 36 passes for 227 yards and a touchdown. Um, he moved around a little bit, but uh, but was drafted by the Falcons in 2017. And, um, yeah, he's fun. coming north of the border, giving the Lions some depth at running back here, and uh, it'll be fun to see him. Yeah, well... Anytime you can get somebody of that caliber to come over here to play for your team, that's always that's a bonus. That's yeah. a good thing. And so hopefully now with a guy like that of that caliber added to the team, maybe we can put up something better than over 50 points, you know, like 60, <laughs> 70. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah, they already have some riches. 59 to 15 uh, win that we talked about last week. Yeah, here, here we go. Uh, did you watch any of the uh, – Better be a fight uh, after the UFC. They were showing it on locally on TV here. Did you see any of that the other night? I I missed it. I missed it. I missed it. He um he got a second round uh, KO win over Joe Smith Jr. Uh, called out uh, Dimitri Bivol. Um and uh, they supposedly uh, have put him I- into uh, a fight uh, with um Anthony Yarde. Uh, he's the uh, mandatory challenger for the um, WBO, and uh, he's better. BF has the IBF, WBC, and WBO light uh, heavyweight champions or, or belts, and they're uh, supposedly 
have put this together, this fight together for London, England, October 22nd against Yarde, but I would love to see him against Dimitri Bivol. Uh, he, uh, yeah, it was a, a hell of a knockout, really good fight the other night, and uh, yeah, I thought maybe you'd seen it because uh, the UFC card just led right into the boxing. It was great. Oh, uh, that, that, I, I missed it. I missed it. I think I stepped out as soon as the UFC was done. But uh, that that matchup with Better Be of and Bivol, that's a good matchup. Yeah, that'd be that'd be a great boxing fight. Yeah, that would be really good. So, okay, man. Well, uh, this was fun. I'm glad to hear you're recovering quite well and uh, on your way. And uh, let's hope your prayers are answered. Uh, God listens and uh, makes makes us feel the summer soon. Uh, yeah, we're we're on the cusp of summer. Uh, June twenty first, we finally get it. And uh, yeah, we need we need the weather though. Oh my God, we're missing it so bad. Yes, we need it. We we deserve it. And I hope we're going to get it, especially this weekend coming up. Yeah. Okay. Well, have a great week ahead. Uh, keep in touch, and uh, we'll talk very soon. Thanks, man. Oh yeah, you betcha. Bye bye for now. Okay. Good night. Bye for now. Okay, another edition of Complete Sports Media's podcast in the books. Uh, that was fun. Yeah, we got to cover the UFC and NBA and a bit of uh, the other things that we love to to keep our uh, focus on. A uh, huge 6-2 win tonight for the Tampa Lightning over the Colorado Avalanche. Uh, Colorado uh, leads the series 2-1. to one. Lightning, um, yeah, yeah, they... Uh, uh, they improved to 8-1 and one after a loss, and uh, Colorado lost their first game on the road this postseason. They're 7-1. and one. Uh, Suddenly, we got a series, guys. Uh, that's super fun. Uh, anyway, I do want to mention our partners and sponsors, uh, Anchor.fm, the easiest place to make a podcast. Phenomenal at po- uh, posting on multiple podcast platforms for us. Uh, Verbero, the... Um, Hockey Equipment and Apparel Company, uh, leader in technology performance and value, and the V350 stick is a must-have for any hockey player in your family or friends. Um, I want to mention Pampas and Possibilities, uh, great at uh, setting up your home and making it look fantastic. You can find their details on our website, as well as Forever Living, the Aloe Vera Company for Health and Beauty Products. Aloe Vera is phenomenal. Uh, really amazing at creating these great products. And uh, you can purchase uh, things on our website for reduced prices. Get a really good discount there. And uh, just go to completesportsmedia.com and completemedianetwork.com. Tons of amazing things every day. So appreciate your support as always. Love you. Take care of yourself. Have a great week ahead. Look forward to seeing you soon. Bye for now.